All right, welcome everyone. I think we're getting we're getting quorum, so um, I think we're getting close. Um, let me check the chat function here one quick minute before we uh, get started. Um, just so everybody knows, we are on a webinar, um, which means that you will not be able to see each other. You should be able to see the panel that is um, involved in the discussion today. Um, so there will be three of us on the screen, um, but everyone else will be kind of in the background. If you do need to um, ask a question or if you have anything um, that you want to talk to us about, please raise your hand. Um, there's a little raise hand function there. Um, and as well as when you get down into your icons there, uh, there's a number of other icons. If you want to give us a thumbs up from every time, from every now and then, from time to time and other things, we would love to see that as well, or a little hand clap. Um, but I will uh, go ahead and get started. Um, ground rules, just so like I was saying, everyone is on hold. Um, someone up, oh, someone raise their hand then to put it down. Um, but we, uh, everybody is on hold and everybody is muted at this point. So like I said, please, if you have any need, please use the chat functionality. Within the chat functionality, you can communicate directly with someone in the call. You can directly communicate with the panelists only and or everyone in the call. So know that those are kind of the ground rules of today's engagement. We are going to keep this to 20 to 30 minutes. We want it to be no longer. That is on purpose because we want this to be a relaxing part of your afternoon that you are not um, in any way, shape or form um, going to be stressed out. We want it to be relaxing and we want you to enjoy the time here with us. So um, if everybody's okay with that, just give me a thumbs up on your screen um, with your little icons. You can do that. Um, that would be greatly appreciated. Um, if, like I said, there you go. I see somebody. Thank you, Jeff Shaw um, and, and some others out there. Oh, thank you guys. Awesome. Um, I am going to be your host or one of the three hosts today. Um, welcome to Bell Flavors and Fragrances. We'll just start off fresh. Um, this is our virtual happy hour series. And in this series, we are exploring um, the latest consumer and market trends that we are seeing in the beverage industry. Um, today, we are going to be mixing up the trendiest drinks along with some interesting facts, some um, curious figures, and as well as a lot of bits of useless information and knowledge um, to helpfully make the next social event that you come to um, very much enjoyable. I'm just gonna check the chat functionality here one more time, make sure everything's okay. Awesome thumbs up, thanks Carolyn, I appreciate it. Um, uh, the end goal of today's session, like I uh, mentioned earlier, is not only to show you how to craft an amazingly tasty and delicious uh, cocktail, high-end cocktail here, but also to make sure that you have the background to it, the knowledge of it, um, so that when you're out this weekend, and, and our goal today, as we'll talk about in a little bit, is to help you slow down your Labor Day weekend. We all want to relax um, and have uh, some time to, uh, to get into the things we like to do over Labor Day. And um, we want to make sure that you're able to be called the mix master at your party or event this weekend. So uh, my name is David Banks. I'm the director of marketing here at Bell Flavors and Fragrances. Um, I will be your co-host today. Um, I am joined by our resident mixologist and flavor scientist, Blake Lyon. Blake, you're allowed to show yourself now. And welcome from inside Bell's beautiful beverage bar with your big bearded host, Blake. And if that isn't enough bees for you, I'm sure you're shouting at your screen, where's the honey? But don't worry, we got something just as good for you today. See, the, we promised entertainment and education and it will be coming. Um, and, and today we are actually uh, very, very excited. We are actually um, happy to be joined by Marvel Field. She is one of our senior perfumers here at Bell. Um, and please say hello, Marvel. Hey, hey good. Boy. How are, is everybody doing today? I don't have as many things to say as Blake did. That was pretty cool, Blake. Thumbs up. You know, we, this is our second time doing this. So, um, so you know, we're all veterans at this. But, um, a roll. but yes, absolutely. Well, I just want to thank everybody for, um, for attending today. We know that time is um, extremely limited. We know it's very valuable. So I just want to... Um, let you know that, like I said, we are going to be 20 to 30 minutes. We're not going to be any longer. If we start to get longer, please let us know and we'll be quiet and you can just click us off. Uh, but each one of these sessions uh, that we are planning to engage with everyone on and now and in the future is going to be specifically focused on a type of alcohol, a specific alcohol trend that we are seeing. And we wanted to make sure that everyone had the opportunity to enjoy an amazing cocktail. So, um, you know, when we are looking at this, our cocktails have been created by um, using market and consumer data that we're finding in the uh, research side of things, um, as well as combining that with the knowledge and education that our R&D teams uh, bring to the table. So 
each one of these trends. And today we are going to be talking about our blueberry slow gin spritz. And there, the word spritz is for a reason, as the mystery will, we will, will unfold here in a little bit. Um, but we really want to hope you enjoy today's session. And we are going to leave a little bit of time at the end so that everybody has an opportunity to ask a couple questions because that was a fun time last time. Um, and we just want to make sure that um, we say thank you. We hope you enjoy today's session. And um, we really, really, really want to um, get the thing started with, and, and like, I love polls, right? I'm a, I'm a data guy, so I'm going to get into my full screen mode here, and I'm going to throw out a poll to everyone. Um, I want to know, you know, what are your plans for Labor Day? So before we get started, um, is it getting outside, doing something outside, having a cocktail, um, or maybe two um, barbecues? There's lots of those fun things. I didn't leave an other in there because I really don't want to know what other folks are going to be throwing out. Um, once we get about half or about 60% of the votes in, typically we'll, uh, we'll, uh, we'll get in here and we'll shut her down, but it looks like we got a pretty good battle for a couple things here. Uh, I'm glad to see that one of them is not too, too significant. Um, come on, give me two more. I got two more. I want to get to 80% and then we'll be done. One more, one more. Come on. Somebody wants to. All right, we'll just send it. 78%. We got close enough. close enough. So if we share the results here, it looks like we got a tie. Um, it looks like people want to get outside. That's good. That's what it should be about, correct? Um, going out to barbecue, going outside. Um, unfortunately, there are six of us who are going to be um, working on the yard or the home. So hopefully you can take a break and you can make this drink this weekend. And that's our goal. So um, with that being said, I know you're probably number one curious on how we came up with these things, um, but we do truly believe in the power of collaboration. And really when we bring these ideas together, um, you know, one of the things that we do find um, extremely unique is that we have our flavorists and our, our fragrance team in the same building. And, and you'll see that today as we get into this, some of the um, inspiration that came from both sides of the, uh, the building um, when we developed our blueberry slow gin spritz. Uh, but before we get started with all the fun stuff and I kick it over to, um, to Blake and, and to Marvel, uh, the one thing that I wanted to probably answer is why the heck are we showing you what we're showing you today? So we, we promise you some education, we promise you some details and some data and it wouldn't be my job if I wasn't able to provide that. So um, first off, blueberry, you know, why did we pick blueberry? Well, blueberry with all the things we have going on today um, is a very healthy fruit. Um, it is high in antioxidants. It is a nice source of vitamin C and fiber. Um, and actually blueberry um, compared to 40 other fresh fruits and vegetables was ranked number one in antioxidant health benefits. So from that perspective, we thought that with, you know, trying to make a healthier beverage these days, that it might be a good choice as well as it shows up on about 25% of US menus and it has grown about 9% in the past four years and 22% on menus in the past 10 years. So it is a very strong um, solid flavor, but also a growing flavor. And when we start to look at the market and the consumer, um, we're seeing this nice rise in fragrant florals that we're seeing and fruits being infused into cocktails. We're seeing a nice rise in botanicals, whether that's around immunity or nutrition, um, those sorts of things. We're also seeing a local inspiration with the, uh, the efforts that have been happening. Now, the local inspiration is, is coming in lots of ways, maybe because of what's going on with the pandemic, but also we're seeing a lot of um, uh, distilleries opening up, right? Um, and one of the things we found, I found a company called the Alchemy Distillery. They make Bolt Genevieve style gin. And gin having those botanical notes seems to be a popular thing where people are going out and looking and foraging for things um, in their local environments and bringing able to, being able to put these into the, uh, the alcohols profiles that they're building. So we're seeing this kind of local connection happening specifically with gin. And when we tie it to slow gin, um, and Blake's going to tell you a little bit more about the history of slow gin and some of the background. Um, it actually is a very foraged berry, readily available in the UK, and something that many families have their own uh, recipes around. So um, from that perspective, the foraging aspect, the, uh, the local aspect of gin, and just the production that we're seeing, uh, we felt it was a very relevant thing for um, everyone to kind of have a, an idea of. And gin being very popular, it's found on about 60% of menus, um, as well as it has about a 8% uh, growth rate over the last four years on menus, and it's grown 86% on menus in the last uh, 10 years. So it's a very, very popular item as well. Um, it has great mixability, and it, it molds well with many things like hops and seasonal items and 
um, Forage Botanicals. So we thought that this was a perfect profile. Roll that into what we call the up and comer, and that's the slow gen um, element. It's on very minimal amount of, of menus, but we believe that it is going to be something because of the elements around it and some of the notes that it does bring out um, is going to be growing. It's grown about 10% or excuse me, 25% over the last 10 years. And seeing that it is the end of summer, we wanted to have something that was um, very refreshing and very, um, let's call it uh, sparkling. So we did uh, pull out the, uh, the dry wine, the Prosecco, as you're going to hear, but we have seen a lot of growth in these sparkling seltzers and the uh, hard seltzers. They've had triple digit growth for the uh, year over year since 2015. So we're seeing huge growth in these, uh, these categories and, and consumers just love them. 41% say that they like to drink these types of RTDs because there's a better variety of flavors and, um, and because they're more fun. And, and what's more fun than um, a blueberry slow gin spritz, right? Uh, so that's what we're gonna be um, coming into today. And just in the spirit of Labor Day and more useless information, um, you know, we wanted to make sure that everybody had the ability this weekend to take something new out, have the background around the, the drink and the inspiration that went into it. And then also um, know that in 1894, President Grover Cleveland actually signed into law the concept of Labor Day where we were working immensely large numbers of hours. So let's take a break. Hopefully this 30 minutes is gonna be that break for you. And um, we are going to enjoy the rest of our time and give you a great concoction to take to your parties, to your homes, to your family. And it could be a mocktail as well. It doesn't have to have the other part in it, um, but there is some inspiration there. But before we turn it over and then you hear more about the, con uh, the cocktail that we're gonna talk about today and we're gonna taste, um, we're going to throw out one more quick poll, and I'm just curious because at the end of the day, I don't know, um, and sorry, because I think I actually um, was sharing that the whole time, so I apologize if I was doing that, uh, but the uh, slow gin profile. So has anyone actually heard of slow gin before today? Just kind of really curious about this because it has an interesting history behind it. We've got a pretty good mix. Give me a couple more, you guys. We'll stop it here. Looks like we are, I'm going to go ahead and end it because we've got 80% in or around 80. Um, and I'm going to share these with everybody. It looks like we got a mixed bag. Um, about half of you knew what it was. Um, another 8% knew what it was, but had, or had heard of Slow Gym, but didn't know what the heck it is. So we're going to educate you on that. And then around half did not. So great. This is awesome. We want to, um, be able to educate you a little bit on what this, uh, this, this drink can be and what it does. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to Blake and he is going to um, kind of stir things up for us. So before we get into the drink, I want to talk a little bit about how we've kind of come to this point. Over the last year, our flavors and perfumists have been working together to kind of share ideas and information, like just sharing like uh, raw ingredients that we may not have got, gotten a chance to use. Um, obviously there is reasons for some of that, but there's a lot of like, uh, I think things that we can definitely learn from each other. If anyone here is a fan of Parks and Rec, Craig from Parks and Rec said that smell is 90% of taste, maybe even 95. So he knows what he was talking about. We well, you know, actually Blake um, or, or Marvel, wasn't this, uh, the, the blueberry flavor, wasn't it actually a fragrance? Didn't it start that way? Yes, yes, absolutely. It started as a, as a fragrance. And, and I, I think Blake just absolutely hit the nail on the head with that you do taste with your nose. I mean, that, that really is a big part of it. And his idea for adding the, uh, the blueberry fragrance as a flavor, wow, that, that really mirrors for me. That, that whole idea was mirroring, mirroring what it is when you put fragrance on before you go out on a night of the, you know, on the town. So it really, it, it draws everybody into your drink and it does exactly what the fragrance generally does too. It draws people toward you, right? So this blueberry fragrance was the inspiration of another uh, senior perfumer at Bell. Uh, his name's Mr. Richard Nero. And he is right now tackling a remote uh, assignment out in Texas. So howdy, Rich. Blake, you guys say howdy to Rich there. Howdy. I need my cowboy hat. He does. I wish I could show you a picture. So you see, uh, fruity fragrances really weren't all that popular in the U.S. In the, until about the 1990s or so. And, um, and so with, even with that, in the last 
30 years or so, we still don't have um, fruit materials to work with, like the same way that I think flavorists do it, um, because we don't use extracts. We use oil soluble materials and, and ingredients. So the design of a fragrance to mimic the, the, the smell of a, uh, of a fruit is real a, about a, a real critical design. And, uh, and one of the things that, that we don't have is we don't have a blueberry oil itself. So to achieve it, uh, the perfumers, we have to use natural ingredients. And that's where it really does come down to us. Natural materials are the key. And for the blueberry, uh, Rich used a Devana oil. And Devana oil is a very versatile material that we use. It's, uh, it's sweet. It's kind of tea light. It's like it's a little reminiscent of, um, of dried fruit. But the Devana really gave the, uh, the blueberry the, the heart and soul and the characteristic of the, uh, of the blueberry. And one of the things I was talking to Rich and he said, yeah, in, uh, even in an apricot fragrance he's made, he's made before, he uses up to 4% of the Devana oil. So the Devana oil was one of the cool notes that he used. But, but in order to, to make the scent of the blueberry, he had other notes in there. Uh, he, had, uh, he had lots of cherry notes. He had a touch of cinnamon to give, uh, to give a roundness to the berry. The sweetness comes from the, uh, from the butyrates. And of course, the esters are very important to, to, building, to building the blueberry. Uh, he used lots of linalool. And, uh, and of course, there's raspberry and strawberry ketones in that. Um, and of course, blueberry and how we, we enjoy blueberry, it, has a, it also has a sweetened tartness to it sometimes. So the sweetness of the vanillin and then just a hint of, uh, it's a product called dimethyl sulfide. And that thing will light you up. It is such a strong material. Um, it's a, a little bit, definitely goes a long way. So what's very interesting about this collaboration, which I found it was just awesome, is that the flavors are able to take the unique profile of Rich's fragrance and convert it, convert it into an edible flavor. And I thought that was really super cool. And then, and then Blake goes on and, and sets the whole place ablaze with his twist on slow gin. So I, I just think that was just awesome. So, so Blake, are you, uh, are you ready to get mixing? Let's make a drink. <laughs> so for this drink, I'm using a highball glass. Uh, it's kind of tall and skinny. Um, We'll see why here in a little bit. Um, and so we're gonna go ahead and fill our glass up with ice. And the first thing I'm gonna throw in there is our Prosecco, which is a very dry, very carbonated white wine. And you might be wondering why we're putting a dry sparkling wine in a cocktail, really carbonated. Um, that is because slow gin itself is actually, tends to be kind of pretty sweet. The uh, berries themselves like aren't too pleasant. And so when you make slow gin, you typically harvest the berries and you actually use a thorn from the slow bush to prick each berry and then you soak the berries in gin and sugar. Now what the sugar does is it helps to extract the juices from those slow berries to get those flavors into the gin. Um, so now that we have four ounces of our wine, we're gonna go ahead and add one ounce of Bell's Slow Gin that I have made just for this cocktail, which features our gin flavor and our slow gin flavor. What I'm does a, does, hey Blake, does a slow berry look like a blueberry? Are they close or like are are they actually in appearance they look almost identical? It's kind of crazy. And to help with that visual aspect of things, I am actually going to be throwing some blueberries in this drink. Now, flavor out wise, they won't really add that much, but visually it will kind of like look like a slow berry without actually changing the flavor too much. Right. You know what, did you actually know, Blake, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off there, but did you know that people have been eating blueberries for 13,000 years? 13,000 years? Yeah. 
Yeah, that's that's amazing. And and it actually is the only food that is truly naturally blue in color. And that's because of a pigment that gives those blueberries that distinctive color. It's called anthocyanin. Hopefully I pronounced that correctly. Um, and it's the same compound that provides the blueberries amazing health benefits as well. So I didn't mean to cut you off there, but I, I, I got excited when you started putting the blueberries in there. <laughs> I get excited about useless information too, David. So don't feel bad about all. <laughs> and so I have topped this off with just some normal seltzer water, giving it a quick stir. And I'm going to be passing this over to Marvel to add an extra special touch to this. So here you go, Marvel. Oh. oh, thank you very much. Thank you. Boy, that looks great. It looks oh, delicious. Right here. Yes. Well, it looks really good, Blake. So our, uh, our special is the, the blueberry spritz that we have. We're just going to add how many uh, how many squirts the the spritzing do you think? One to two should be fine. Oh wait, I forgot. I forgot. Anytime you do anything with flavors or fragrances, you always have to taste it first without, and then taste it with it. So like I forgot. Would you mind tasting this again? Yeah. Is that just because you guys want to keep drinking, or is it because you actually need to taste before and after? That depends on the day, David. Yeah, yeah. I, I consider that a, uh, a reasonable um, uh, duty of mine. Fair enough. Flavors and any time of their, uh, you know, their panels and such. So you said three, so one. Two. So because you're still talking about blueberry and then, then it, you know, did you know a single blueberry bush can produce 6,000 blueberries per year? 6,000? 6,000. All right, Blake, there you go. Give me a taste and let me know if it tastes better. Or well, let's say enhanced, enhanced. That's really good. And so to kind of explain what she did is we actually took that flavor and kind of put it in uh, a, a, a sprayable form and so this takes this normal cocktail, which is just kind of balancing out the sweetness of the slow gin with the dryness of the white wine, which balance each other out. And then we added a very floral blueberry on top to kind of just really bring this cocktail to life. And so what I really love about this drink is it tastes great. Visually, it looks amazing. And number three, it smells great. It's like all the things that you want when you're making a product for the marketplace. Awesome, it does look amazing. And now from, I, I know we've talked about slow gin, but is there anything else that you can use a, a slow berry for? I mean, are they just pretty much, you just have to soak them in liquor and sugar and drink them? <laughs> Actually, out of curiosity, I did do a little research into this and I saw that you can, um, you can make some slow jam, you can make some slow chocolate, there's slow brandy, a slow cordial, even a slow cider, or shall we call it a slider? Nice, nice. <laughs> well, I love the slow jam. Let's just put it that way too. Uh, there's nothing that goes better than, than that. Um, you probably listened to a lot of slow jams back in the day, didn't you, David? Yes, I remember it brings back bad memories of middle school. I will tell you that. Um, so let's just say, like, let's just say we don't have Prosecco. Like, I, I, I mean, I know I've got this fancy bar behind me, um, but, but I, let's say I don't have Prosecco. Can I use something else in place of that? You know, say I'm out, on, out in, at a party and something along the lines, maybe I have a hard seltzer, would that also work? Or a, a tonic water or something like that? I think that would work just fine for this. Like the dryness of the wine does kind of help to balance it out a little bit, but I think that would be perfectly fine. And honestly, I'm not much of a wine guy, so I did some research and I kind of ended up settling on this bottle, um, which is pretty good for what it is. But like I said, I'm not normally a wine guy, so I would probably easily swap that out for a seltzer. And if you don't have um, a, a collaboration between perfumers and flavorists at your disposal and you can make a, a amazing blueberry spray, there is a way to still get some blueberry flavor into this cocktail at home. It's a, an old brewer's secret. If you take some fruit and you freeze it, the ice crystals will like penetrate the cell walls 
and kind of release those flavors. And so as those blueberries start to thaw in your drink, just much like this ice is, it'll start to get more and more of that blueberry taste in there. So on a hot day, like we're supposed to have over our Labor Day weekend, the end of summer, that would be an amazing thing to do then. Sounds good. It's awesome. This is surprisingly refreshing. Yes, it, it does look delicious. So let me ask this. Um, I'm going to, we've got a few minutes. We said we would be done within 30 and we have five minutes left. So um, is there anybody out there who has any questions for anyone here um, that's on the panel? Any, uh, I can facilitate questions or I, I can enable you to talk um, if you raise your hand or you can use the chat functionality as well and, um, and go that route. Give everybody an opportunity to see if they would like to ask a question. We have a Q and A. Um, if you don't have slow gin, can you use gin with something else? Carol Ann wants to know, or Carolyn wants to know. Sorry. You could, but then you're starting to kind of get into a different uh, cocktail. Um, I mean, if you definitely wanted something a little bit less sweet, I think that would be pretty good. Um, and you, you're probably not going to have like that, that slow flavor as well. Um, yeah, that's the, that's the other thing. It's like, um, the, these slow gins tend to have quite a bit of sugar in them. Actually, I think they can range from like 15 to like almost 30% sugar. They're actually pretty high. Um, so you're going to lose some of that sweetness if you replace gin with slow gin. But I mean, a cocktail is whatever's in the glass. It's like, it's ultimately about like what you enjoy drinking. So, yeah. Good. And we had one more question um, and it's more of, I can give you a quick answer to this. It was, uh, can you provide a list of ingredients again? Um, we will actually be sending out to everyone who attended today, a um, copy of the recipe card that includes the, uh, the recipe that Blake has pulled together. Um, so yes, you will be receiving that. Um, I have everyone's emails who RSVP. So um, I will be sending that out and getting that in your hands before the weekend starts. Um, I would say, uh, looks like uh, ingredients. It looks like that's about it. Um, I think there is a, there's a comment um, here just says, uh, very much in line with the idea of fusion cuisine and molecular gastronomy where scientists and mixologists find synergy in the world um, without boundaries. And that's very much what we tried to do, make it a multi-sincere experience where you're, you're getting everything involved and, and really trying to use all your senses to enjoy it to the fullest. Um, you know, if I have no other questions, which I'm not seeing any others pop up, up oh, one more. Um, there's, a, there's another thing there that came in, but it looks like it was not a question, um, but it went out to everyone. So um, Guys, thank you very much for your time. Um, I, I'll just, I'll, I'll close here. We got about two minutes uh, before we close. Um, in closing, I just want to say once again, thank you very much. We hope you enjoyed everything uh, today, hearing about these delicious cocktails and trends in the marketplace. Um, we know with the closing of many restaurants and the changes and things that have happened with the COVID pandemic, and we really wanted everyone to be on top of the latest flavor and fragrance inspirations that we're seeing impacting the beverage scene. And we wanted to also provide some options for operators with some on-trend ideas for home drink solutions. So um, as a follow-up from today, like I mentioned, you will be receiving a copy of the recipe card that the drink, for the drink that, J that uh, Blake just created. And if you would like to actually receive a sample of the, the blueberry slow gin flavors or learn more about our full line of TTB flavors, please contact your local Bell rep. Um, or send an email to info at bellff.com and we will be happy to give you more details. That's I-N-F-O at bellff.com. So thank you everyone once again for your time today. We greatly appreciate it. Uh, thank you, Marvel. Thank you, Blake. Thank you, everybody online. Um, we appreciate it. Um, have a great Labor Day and be on the lookout for your recipe card. All right. Thanks a lot. Take care. Thank you. Bye.